Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to introduce everybody to what we call the hypergeometric distribution. And other than having a really fancy name, this is something that as a matter of fact that if you've studied basic probabilities before, you probably had to do a lot of these already. Uh, but we're going to kind of formalize it here and talk about when, why, and how I would use the hypergeometric distribution. So let's start with this. The hypergeometric distribution is used in one of two situations. We say when things are not replaced. So this is really important. We say uh, hypergeometric we're going to learn here in a minute are very binomialish things, uh, but when we don't replace things, what that does is necessarily makes our, our events dependent events, and therefore we can't use the binomial distribution. Uh, and then also this, when we have something that is binomialish, so you know, in terms of the experiment that we're doing, it's an either-or situation. Either say a drug was effective or was not effective, or I roll a two on a die, or I don't roll a two on a die. But when we talk about things that have very, very small sample sizes, what you have to realize is this. Let's say, for example, in a group of 20 people, you know, you're either a boy or you're a girl. But I say, what's the likelihood that I grab, like, you know, 10 girls in a row? You have to realize that the moment I grab the first person, whether they're a boy or a girl, it really severely affects the probability that you grab a girl in the next one because now you've taken something out of the sample. And being that it was a sample of only 20 people, it affects it quite greatly. So when we deal with very small sample sizes, but it seems to be a binomial type of situation, we use hypergeometric instead. So let's go ahead and define what we mean by hypergeometric distributions. Okay, uh, We say, uh, actually, let's just look at an example. It'll be a, a good way to kind of explore this. We say, for example, suppose a committee of four people, we have four people on our committee here, is to be selected from seven women and five men. What is the probability that the committee will consist of three women and one man? So I say to solve this problem, one must first find the number of ways that a committee of three people, three women, excuse me, and one man can be selected from seven women and five men. Um, so let's go ahead and start with this. I think that the best thing we could do is, if you're reading through this with me, the first thing you should always read is the last sentence, because it's telling you the probability it wants you to find. But we're going to go ahead and start by writing that down. So we say the probability consists of three women one man. So this is what we're trying to find. So we know of course with probabilities we have to find the total number of ways we could do something and then a specific number of ways we could do just this event. So after we've written our probability the next best thing we could do for ourselves is draw a picture. Now recall I said hypergeometric things tend to be smaller sample sizes. So in this case the probability we're finding involves men and women. Uh, so we're going to make a category for women and a category for men, and we're going to split this up. But you're going to notice we don't have many in each category. As a matter of fact, total women, we know that we've got seven women, and we've got five total men for a grand total of a sample of 12 people. So you'll notice it's an either-or type of situation. Either I'm going to grab, say, a woman or I'm not, or grab a man or I'm not going to, you know. Uh, but we say finding the likelihood of three women and one man, let's start with this. In terms of totals, the very first thing we want to do is rock out the top of this. We could go after the bottom. I just said totals. So we'll go after the bottom first. But the bottom, what I want to know is how many ways could I even select a committee of four people? Who cares if it's three women, one man? Uh, four people from 12 people. So the trick to this distribution is this. Start with the totals. We're going to do this with combinations. So we say 12 people total. I want to choose four. First things first. This is like our totals part right here. We're saying this represents the number of ways we can get four people from 12 people. And I got that total number from here, and I also got this number four from our sample that we took over here, the, the group that we grabbed. Now we're going to go through the top of this, and we say three women and one man. Here's all we have to do. We'll just go through a category at a time, starting with women. Of the seven women, in this case, we want to choose how many? And we want three. And of the five men, so we say the next category over here on the right, I want to choose, in this instance, one. Now that we've got these things, it's a matter of we can just go through and evaluate them now. So seven choose three. I wonder if my calculator has combinations on it here. I don't necessarily see them. But that doesn't mean that we can't uh, do this here. As a matter of fact, if you bear with me, I've got another calculator sitting right next to me here. So uh, seven choose three. I just want to be lazy not to do it by hand here. We say 7 choose 3 came out to be 35 on the top there, times uh, 5 choose 1. That one's easy. We say times 5. And then 12 choose 4. So 12 choosing 4 uh, comes out to be 495. 
So 495. So what we end up with is this 5 times 35, which is 165 out of 495. So if we divide these out, we get 0 points. So 165 divided by 495, using my by hand calculator again, I get uh, uh, this. So we got about a 33% chance of consistently, you know, or choosing at random three women and one man uh, if we've calculated this properly. So 35 times 5. Oh, we didn't. We didn't. Sorry. I did this in my head. This is 175. And if we go back and fix this now, I thought that sounded a little weird. 175 divided by 495, forgive me, 0 0.353535. So approximately 0.3535-ish. Uh, so there's our probability. So yeah, we're going to do a couple more examples, but what I want to do in this video is, since we're introducing ourselves to this, I want to show you the formal way of kind of defining this. But it says the result of the problem that we just did could be generalized using a special probability distribution called the hypergeometric distribution that we use with small samples uh, and, and without replacement. So we say the hypergeometric distribution is a distribution of a variable that has two outcomes, so it sounds binomial, but when sampling is done without replacement. So the probabilities for the hypergeometric distribution can be calculated using this formula. So the things I want to point out in this formula are these. We say we have an A, we have a B, we have an N, we have an X. And perhaps it'd be better if I wrote in this color A, B, and X. But according to this, we say given a population with only two types of objects, so for example, females, males, defective, not defective. So it sounds binomial, success or failure. We say that, um, there are A items of the first type and B items of the second type. And then we say A plus B equals the total population, where the total population is N. So one thing I can tell you about N is this. If you add up all the items of one kind, say in the last example, all the women plus all the men, you had the total amount of people in the group. Okay. So we'd say down here in our formula, we say total sample size. That's our N, total sample size. Okay. So this is the total... Uh, grabbed here, items of each kind, but we'd say now this A here and this A and B here are how many there are of each kind, and X is how many occurrences we're grabbing of each one. So just to kind of show you how this comes into play here, we say 10 people for you know apply for a job as assistant manager of a restaurant. Five have completed college and five have not. If the manager selects three applicants at random, find the likelihood that all three are college graduates. So first things first, let's write our probability we want to find. Last sentence says, find the probability that all three are college grads. So we say three college. Okay, so now let's draw our sample space. Our sample space, it seems that if I'm finding the probability that three went to college out of three people that I chose, if I select three at random, uh, then all I care about, it seems to me, is college and no college. And so we're going to split this up. We say, now I need A and B, where A and B represent how many there are of each type. So we'd say, how many people did go to college? And we were told that five had gone to college. So we'll put a five in here. And five had not gone to college for a grand total N of 10. So now, in order to calculate this, let's just go ahead and start on the bottom. We see that we have totals numbers down here. So we'd say, OK, down here we say A plus B. There were five of one kind, five of another, so we say 10 total things. And of those 10, in this instance, we were choosing three of them. Of the 10 total people here, we were choosing three applicants at random. So using our totals numbers here, we say 10 and 3. We got the bottom sample space. So now we're going to go through and find the probability that exactly three, all three are college grads. So we'll just go through a category at a time, starting with college. We say of the five college people, I want to choose how many in this case. And in this case, we want to choose three. And of the five no college people, in this case, we want to choose none of them. But what I do want to point out is this. This three here and this zero here should add up to the total amount down here. Okay. And this five people that went to college and these five people that didn't go to college should add up to the ten people that didn't go to college down here. So now we need to calculate these. So we say five choose three. 5 choose 3 happens to be 10, okay? Uh, 5 choose 0 is 1. I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys to find. You know, we say, and we say 10 choose 3 comes out to be 120. So we get 10 out of 120, which is 1 12th, which is approximately uh, 1 12th, 0.0833.
So we got 0.083 repeating. Okay. So this is just some uh, you know examples of the hypergeometric uh, distribution.